San Diego must not be divided between the very poor and the very wealthy. Could a minimum wage in San Diego, higher than the states, make it to the ballot and into law? We have to pay competitively so we can get the best people, and if we don't, it costs us money in the long run. Should city council members keep voting on their own salaries and the mayor's? One of those issues is the water and, you know, water credits, the EDUs that are extremely expensive. Growth issues in rural communities, politics at the grassroots. And now, Politically Speaking with Gene Cubison. Good morning. Thanks for joining us in the wake of allegations that San Diego political campaigns were once again infused with dirty money. Mid six figures this time. We probably shouldn't be surprised how people with that kind of disposable cash find sources of power to invest in. Is it just good government they're seeking or certain outcomes, influence? What did they tell fundraisers for the targeted candidates and vice versa? If absolute power corrupts, absolutely, what about absolute money, politically speaking? First on our docket today, a proposed minimum wage ballot measure in San Diego. A great city must have a vibrant, growing middle class. Poverty wages have got to go! Low-income workers have been taking the cause of higher pay to the streets seeking more than the state's bump from $8 an hour to $9 in July and $10 in 2016. Will San Diego voters up the ante? And here now to weigh the numbers and dynamics of this issue, which is resonating in other places and on Capitol Hill, are Claire Crawford, president and CEO of the Center on Policy Initiatives, and Mark Cafferty, who holds the same titles with the San Diego Regional Economic Development Corporation. And thanks for being with us today, folks. Um, Claire, we will start with you. Research is showing that somewhere around $30,000 is the self-sufficient wage in San Diego. I guess uh, that you don't need government subsidies and things like that. Mm -hmm. That's twice the current minimum wage, about a third more than the state's uh, hike to uh, the level in 2016. Uh, Interim Mayor Gloria embraced that as a benchmark in the, uh, his State of the City address. That translates to about $14.52 an hour. That's, uh, that's quite an increase. Uh, how do you imagine that's going to, uh, to go over in the body politic? <laughs> Well, I think there's, uh, there'll be a lot of public discussion about what the appropriate dollar figure is, but I think uh, Todd Gloria led with the right framework. We really need to be thinking about what it costs to afford basic necessities here. And, you know, the other problem is in our economy, the, the recession really fundamentally transformed our economy, and we lost lots of middle-class jobs, and they were by and large replaced with these very low-wage service sector jobs, hotel industry, retail, and people just really can't afford to get by on those jobs, but it also has a negative impact on our economy because we really don't have enough consumer spending that's driving the recovery, so it's been really sluggish. And so a raise in the minimum wage would actually be good for everybody, and obviously also, as you pointed out, good for taxpayers because it means fewer people that are dependent on public subsidy. Mark, you want to address it uh, from the other side of the coin here. Yeah, <clears throat> I mean, I think I mean, two things that Claire said that I hope are true is one is that we do have a lot of public discussion about this. I think lately in San Diego, we haven't really. I mean, I think we, we've, we've shown that we want to have public discussion, but we haven't kind of brought all sides to the table. And this is one that I think we need to do that on. I mean, Claire knows, I've worked with Claire for a long time. And Claire, and I've worked with CPI for a long time. And my background, as you know, Gene, has largely been focused on workforce development and training people to lift them out of poverty, which I think has to be a significant part of this discussion. I think that's woefully underfunded. And the minimum wage, it's going up. I mean, you, you said it straight out. I mean, the, the state has already made this decision. The decision that we need to make in San Diego is what does that look like for San Diegans? And I think that it's one that we just can't keep pitting two sides against each other. So on. is there a tipping point between the state and, let's say, 1452? We know this in uh, SeaTac, Washington, it's up to $15 an hour, mm -hmm. which is gaslighting yeah. city council people in the city of Seattle and the state legislature. The governor's calling for, uh, for a hike in the state wages there. So, so what you have is this critical mass, but is there a, a tipping point between where the, the helpful uh, dynamic to the economy turns the other way in terms of inhibiting job growth and, uh, and uh, sustainability of, uh, of business development. I mean, I think the, you know, the, um, we're looking at in March actually revisiting the numbers and coming out with some new numbers that evaluate the cost of living. At the end of the day, if there's not enough consumer demand, if there aren't enough consumers in the city, people can actually afford to spend money the economy won't grow and businesses won't be able to thrive here anyway. So, 
What, what was your thought? You're, you're familiar with uh, essentially the minimum wage industries or those that, yep. uh, that use that, that workforce, uh, restaurants, fast food, things like that. Um, we, are hearing, uh, we are hearing cries of uh, uh, too much. It's going to be very tough. I mean, the, the reality is, I mean, Claire is right. It is, it is expensive to live in San Diego. We know that. It's well documented. It's well documented by Sandag. It's not just well documented by groups um, who advocate for a minimum wage increase. I mean, this is an issue we've really got to tackle. But the way of tackling it, in my opinion, based on everything we see and hear from businesses, at a time when, when so many costs are going up for businesses during such a fragile economic recovery, it would be, in my opinion, very irresponsible for us to tackle this the wrong way. CTEC um, is not a great example for San Diego to look to. It makes all the sense in the world when people want to talk about that as a tipping point for Seattle, but that was so much based around the dynamics of one airport and the workforce tied to that one airport, and we are a very different economy in San Diego. So um, for those service jobs, my hope would be that we're working together to lift people, uh, to get people on career ladders that help to lift them out of those service jobs and into, quite frankly, a lot of the open jobs that we have in San Diego right now that we can't fill because we have a mismatch of skills uh, with the residents we have in San Diego and needs of the employers, and that could cause employers to leave. Okay, um, very quickly now, let's say 25 seconds or less for each here. Um, it's one thing to say, okay, we're not talking past each other, we want to go win-win, but the political dynamics to get this on the ballot and to, uh, if uh, you want to pass it, um, you, how do you think that's going to play out? Well, I think, you know, you have at this point, you have people like Bill O'Reilly, you have Ron Unz uh, saying it should be $12 an hour, a conservative, multi-millionaire businessman. And, and, um, I think we're moving towards more and more consensus that the minimum wage does need to be raised. And, and overwhelmingly across the country, including in San Diego, voters do support this. Regular people do support this. And frankly, you know, even though businesses may feel, as Mark says, that they're, bring, they're being piled on, you know, I think that's been the experience of average working people over the last many years. Mark, you have the last word. Yeah, I'm just, I always remember the day that you cited Bill O'Reilly. So that's, <laughs> <laughs> I think, um, I, you know, I, I think this is one where uh, there, there, is a, there is a point that we have to get to. We've never studied this gene from both sides. We've never looked at what is the impact going to be on business and what would the impact be on people. And here's to so that proposition here on Politically Speaking. Absolutely, okay. absolutely. And thanks very much for joining us, Claire Crawford, thanks, Mark Steve. Cafferty, and coming up next, should the City Council keep getting the last word on salary setting, even if they keep saying no to raises, and balancing political priorities with economic realities in rural communities? Where's the middle ground? Stay with us.